The Glenica Bridge links Berlin with Potsdam. Before the fall of communism, it was part of the border between West Berlin and East Germany. The bridge was known the world over as the Cold War location for spy swaps. Today, it lies in the middle of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, first designated in 1990. It includes Potsdam's new garden, which was created in the 19th century by German landscape gardener Peter Josef Lenné. Landscape architect Gerd Schörig is responsible for the upkeep of the new garden. Lenné took on the new garden in 1820 and joined it to new sections. Part of the conversion was to stage manage the view from the new garden down to the machine house. The visual axes extend to the surrounding parkland. They were a key design element of the new garden. But when the wall was built, it destroyed a 20-meter swath directly on the riverbank, cutting through the park and blocking the views. And das muss man sich jetzt just imagine it. From here, it looks just like one big park. But the border zone was located between the two big lakes, and this area was an overgrown wilderness that was no longer accessible. Alles zugewachsen, verwildert und nicht mehr erlebbar. When the wall fell 20 years ago, Schürig was commissioned to restore the new garden to its former glory. But back then, he had little idea what awaited him. For most East Germans, like Schürig, the border zone had been a no-go area. And suddenly there was a hole in the wall, and I could look through it. For the first time, I saw Glienecke and the Peacock Island right in front of me, with just a small lake in between. And I realized the sites all formed an entity. Of course, I knew this in theory, but to experience it like that was a key insight for me. Peter Rohn had never seen the wall up close either. Right after the border opened, the Potsdam artist decided to photograph it. Two decades on, his photos are exhibited at Babelsberg Palace. Back in the winter of 1989, the photographer had to pluck up courage to approach what was left of the wall. There was no one at the wall, which was still a really unpleasant sight, with towers still standing and a few border guards still walking around. There hadn't been complete clarification of the situation. It wasn't that I was scared, but I felt very inhibited. But I overcame that, and when I saw it up close, I was very keen to just get the job done. The photos clearly show how brutally the border complex infringed upon the lives of people, but also on the life of the park itself. 13 hectares of the garden were flattened and destroyed. Ancient oak trees were felled. Schirig had little historical material to help him restore the garden in accordance with Linné's design. To remain as faithful to the original as possible, he superimposed various survey diagrams. Where they concurred, he had paths laid and new trees planted. But even that wasn't a simple matter. For years, soldiers patrolling here used spray herbicides to keep the view clear. When we started the restoration work, we had huge problems re-establishing trees and shrubs here because the herbicides they used to keep the lawns or sand strips clear had sometimes accumulated at deeper levels in the ground. Getting rid of the herbicides was a costly process, but over the past 15 years, plants have begun to grow here again. Thanks to Gerd Schirrig, the park has been restored to its former glory.